On pages 157 to 58 of his book, The God Delusion, Richard Dawkins outlines or summarizes what he calls the central argument of my book. And when you look at this argument, the conclusion to which is, therefore, God almost certainly does not exist, it is a patently logically invalid argument. Even if you grant all six steps in the argument, the conclusion that God does not exist doesn't even follow logically from the argument. So it's on its face, it's logically invalid. But when you look at the argument more closely, I think it has a number of premises in it that are false. What, what are these premises? Well, Dawkins says that you cannot infer a designer of the universe based on the complexity in the universe because this raises a further question, namely, who designed the designer? Uh, and that therefore this leaves biological complexity unexplained. Now, this argument on Dawkins' part, I think, is quite inept because philosophers of science recognize that in order to recognize an explanation as the best explanation, you don't have to have an explanation of the explanation. In order to recognize that an explanation is the best, you don't need to have an explanation of the explanation. Let me give you an example. Suppose archaeologists digging in the earth were to come across artifacts looking like arrowheads and pottery shards and tomahawk heads. It would obviously be uh, justifiable to infer that these artifacts were the products of some lost tribe of people even if the archaeologists had no idea whatsoever who these people were or how they came to be there. Similarly, if astronauts were to discover a pile of machinery on the backside of the moon, they would be justified in inferring that these were the products of intelligent design, even if they had no idea whatsoever where this machinery came from or who put it there. You don't have to have an explanation of the explanation in order to recognize that an explanation is the best. And similarly, in the case of biological complexity, in order to recognize that intelligent design is the best explanation of biological complexity, you don't need to be able to explain the designer. That can be left an open question for future inquiry. So the argument is inept right from the beginning. In fact, when you think about it, if in order to recognize an explanation is the best, you have to have an explanation of the explanation, that leads immediately to an infinite regress. You'd need to have an explanation of the explanation of the explanation, and, and so on to infinity. You would never have an explanation of anything, which would destroy science. So that Dawkins' principle, if adopted, would actually be completely destructive of science. That's how inept this argument is. So, that argument doesn't work. Now, Dawkins goes on to defend the idea that a designer wouldn't be a good explanation because, he says, the hypothesis of a divine designer is more complex than the world that you're trying to explain. Uh, an explanation has to be simpler than the phenomenon you're trying to explain, and he thinks a divine designer is less simple than the world, the universe, involving all this complexity. Well, that is completely mistaken. When you reflect on the idea that God is an immaterial entity, a spirit, uh, um, he, he is a mind without a body, then God is a remarkably simple entity because he has no parts. There's no composition in God's being. An unembodied mind is an entity that is startlingly simple in its nature. Um, so what Dawkins is obviously confused is a mind's ideas, which may be very complex, with a mind itself, which is a very simple entity. So insofar as you're interested in simplicity, the hypothesis of a divine designer is certainly an advance in simplicity, for what it's worth, over the unexplained contingent complexity of the universe with all its diversity and variations. So I think that Dawkins' central argument is just hopeless. It is logically invalid on the face of it.
and moreover, it's predicated upon premises that I think are clearly false.